everybody. Uh, welcome to those of you here in person and also uh, joining us online. We're uh, excited to welcome you to Christ Memorial Lutheran Church this morning. Uh, and welcome to this nice fall weather we're having. Uh, if I can go ahead and get you guys to stand up, uh, we're going to begin our worship here with a song, Everlasting God. Hopefully you guys all recognize it. Uh, so if you go ahead and please stand and we'll sing. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, and you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. And you are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. want to go ahead and uh, stay standing. We're going to sing another song, Christ Be All Around Me. I think you guys all know this one. If you need to have a seat, you're welcome to do that as well. And as I rise, strength of God, go before and lift me up as I wait. Eyes of God, look upon, be my sight, as I wait, heart of God, satisfied and sustained, as I hear the voice of God. My God, be 
by my side as I rest a breath of God fall upon and bring me things wanted to make sure uh, that we uh, brought to your attention first off howdy right. welcome to worship with us here today uh, for those of you joining us online I hope you can join us in person sometime soon in the meantime glad you can be with us however you can uh, a couple things wanted to make sure to point out to everybody um, not this one not Wednesday 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 yes not this Wednesday but the following one rock the retired older Christian kids are going to go out for dinner. They have a monthly dinner, and they're going to get some live German music, apparently. So Rudy Lechner's Restaurant. So if you'd like to get some more info, you can talk with Patty or Shirley uh, for that part there. Um, on the 29th of October, so the Sunday in three weeks after our second service, we're going to be having a uh, big meet and treat. It's like a trunk or treat. But instead of in the cars, we're going to have them throughout the gym, games, candy, uh, some different uh, fun activities for the kids. So uh, feel free to come on. It'll be about uh, noon until, I don't know, whenever. So yeah, two, maybe somewhere in there. Uh, so should be a great time. And if you'd like to set up one of the booths, uh, one of the tables where you can actually have one of the games, please let us know. We'd love to get you signed up for that as well. Uh, next Sunday. After uh, this service, we're going to be having uh, one. Uh, the youth are going to be having some games, some hangout time. Uh, so we're going to be doing that from noon to two. So middle and high school youth and uh, uh, any that are kind of sort of about that age. Um, maybe Ed. I don't know. But with it, though, also is uh, if you'd like to have some information on and give some feedback on the audiovisual equipment that we're looking at purchasing in the near future, uh, every once in a while we want to make sure that any of the hiccups, the glitches, we want to take care of it. But if you'd like to make sure you have some information on that, uh, be sure to stay after worship uh, next Sunday uh, after the second service. So, did I got that right? All right, good, awesome. So, uh, with that, um, but making sure, good, I think we are set to go. Today, we're going to be looking at Philippians 3, especially understanding what it is that Paul.
Paul was warning the people about not spending all of our time focused on the laws, not spending our time ignoring what God wants from our life. But the way of Christ transforms everything. So, with that, we actually get a chance to bring somebody into the family of God. So, uh, Jeffrey and Callie, uh, if you'd like to bring Rainer Hill up, and we'll go, and as well as any uh, sponsors who are able to join us. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, yeah, I've got the uh, uh, certificate, the candle, all that. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Y'all doing all right today? All right. Everybody's healthy. All right. All right. Good. Oh, awesome. I know, right? Oh, my goodness. But and that, that's the wonderful part, though, is um, whenever we're with the people of God, you get a chance to make sure that you care for the people of God. And uh, what are you getting? You baptized. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Okay, that was some excitement right there. All right, there we go. So let us uh, continue with our worship as we go through the baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his son Jesus Christ who atoned for the sin of the whole world and whoever, and, and whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So, I was going to, you know, ask Rainer a lot of different questions, but, you know, seems a bit shy today. So, uh, but yeah, what, with that, though, how about, as I go through the questions, as, as uh, the parents, you can be able to express and say what you believe and what you will be teaching over the course of, the, uh, 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 of Rainer's life. So, with this, how are you to be named? Oh, <laughs> something in Hebrew in there. Lahayim. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Rainer, receive the mark of the Holy Cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Oh, got to mark you too. There we go. Good. <laughs> Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet, according to your great mercy, you, pres you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. You led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Rainer according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood all sin in him which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that with all believers in your promise he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. Got that? Okay, good. In the Lutheran church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. So basically, everything that scripture has taught us, we hold that to be true. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction, and nurture in the Christian faith. 
and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Sponsors, is it your intention to serve Rainer as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, then say, yes, with the help of God. God, enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. According to St. Mark, they brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Now I'm going to ask y'all some questions. Nothing, nothing too tricky. All right, good. Right? So on behalf of Rainer, for the sake of how they raised and being able to say this is what we believe and what we teach as a family. Do you reject the devil? If so, then say yes, we reject him. Do you reject all his works? If say if so, say yes, we reject them. Do you renounce all his ways? If so, then say yes, we renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? If so, then say, yes, we believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell? The third day, right there, right there, good, okay. The third day rose from the dead, descended in heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence will come to judge the living and the dead. If so, then say, yes, we believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, then say, yes, we believe. Do you wish for Rainer Hill Acuna to be baptized? Just look a little bit there. Awesome. There we go. You ready? Okay. I baptize you, Rainer Hilakuna, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive this white garment to signify this new life in Christ, cleansed, made new, purified in his blood. So grab the candle. Rainer, receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. The Almighty God and Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. Almighty and merciful God, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family, and have granted Rainer the new birth and holy baptism, and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In holy baptism, God the Father, has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven, 
and one holy Christian and apostolic church, we receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us welcome the newest brother in Christ. Certificate for you. There you go. Awesome. One or the other. Ah, yeah, there you go, there you go. Absolutely. <coughs> we, uh, we oftentimes take for granted that we, coming into this world, we still struggle with the sin nature. And the thing is, is that it's not to say that we don't grow or you know, learn new things. It's not to say that we always have the exact same struggles. But we sometimes get so used to it that we begin to justify things. We just assume that's the way it always is, and we just kind of move on. But the thing is, is that when God is looking at our heart, he's not looking at someone where he's trying to say, all right, I caught you. I saw what you did but rather he's looking at us because he loves us. All right. And with that, is with that love, he also wants to hold us, to change us, and to make us new because of what he has done on the cross for us. So with that, I invite you to take a few moments in silence. There are some kneelers in front of you if you wish to use them. But in this silence, we invite you to come before our God, the one who has said that he has loved you, the one who gave his son for you, and say, God, here are the things that I keep avoiding, but in your presence, I'm now honest about them. Let's take that time with our God. One of the things when I was younger was this fear that would come with OCD that my hands were never quite clean enough. And it would sometimes be this point where it'd be five minutes later and it's still this feeling of I'm not quite clean enough. And after a while, realizing that based on our work, we're never clean enough. But then the peace comes from knowing that it's not our own washing, but the washing that has come from Christ Jesus. And because of what he has done for you, I have the joy of telling you that your sins are hereby forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whatever may still be lingering, let it go. It's already been taken care of for you. And with that, let us continue in worship.
take the faithless one aside and speak the words you are mine you call the cynic and the proud come to me The reading today is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 4b through 14, and can be found on page 981 in your Pew Bible. If anyone thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of, he of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to the zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of, Christ, of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes, from, comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death that by any means possible I may attain but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward of what lies ahead press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God is in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Please rise for the gospel of our Lord. Our gospel reading today comes from the 21st chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew. If you wish to follow along in your pew Bible, it's on page 827 or you can see it up on the screen here. Jesus said, hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. 
When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When, therefore, the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those servants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing. It was marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. And when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We have been shown who God is, not just as the Father who has made us, but also as his Son who gave his life for us. And by his Spirit, we are empowered with that new life each and every day. Let us speak those words of who this God is with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we join to sing Calvary. Calvary covers it all. 
but Jesus. And no one but Jesus can make us pure as snow. We stand in your freedom. This Calvary covers it all. Let's sing Calvary. Calvary covers it all. My sin and shame don't count anymore. All praise to the one who has ransomed my soul. Calvary covers it all. And Calvary covers it all. Sin and shame don't count anymore. All praise to the one who has ransomed my soul. Calvary covers it all. And all praise to the one who has ransomed my soul. Calvary covers it all. God bless us this morning, not because we've managed to do enough, say enough, but rather because he has given himself for us. May his word and his spirit flow through us and in our worship this morning. Amen. Howdy. Well, fancy meeting all of you here today. I wanted to kind of talk about what it means to repeat yourself a little bit. How many times have you either had to tell the kids the same thing over and over again, or you were the one who needed to hear something over and over again? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, uh, no, I, I definitely know it's more of you in the back row over there. Yeah, definitely, definitely for sure. When I, was a, when I was a kid and, and, and I'd be uh, playing with the Legos and every once in a while I'd be thinking, there's a piece. I know that this piece is somewhere here and I need that to complete what I'm working on. And I'd just be sitting there digging, trying to find that one piece. And then all of a sudden down the hall I'd hear, how? And I would realize two things. Number one, I think my dad found my Lego with his foot. And two, maybe that's the one I was missing. But oftentimes with that is then my dad would remind me again, you need to pick up your Legos. Okay, okay, I promise I will pick up my Legos. And then what would be happening sometimes the next day, sometimes later the same day. And time and time again, we see that we have to hear the same words over and over because we keep going down the same best up path. And that's what we end up seeing today with our Philippians 3 uh, passage. So Paul, oh, go ahead, switch to the next slide real quick. Paul is making sure that he tells everyone, I'm going to repeat this. It's probably going to be for your benefit. And the reason he says that is because this lesson is what he has to say over and over again. To beware of those who make the law into what we focus on and those who want to ignore anything to do with the law and how we live. One of the things that we see here is it discusses what we see with circumcision. Now, Paul is basically very, very upset at what people have been doing with circumcision. There was a group of people that were called the Judaizers. And they were spending so much of their time with what made them look righteous rather than asking what it meant to be righteous. And so oftentimes they would take things that were meant to be an outward sign of worship, but they would substitute it for what was going on on the inside. So especially in those times, whenever a, a young boy was eight days old, that they would bring this child to the rabbi and go through a circumcision. But the thing is, is that 
if it doesn't have any true meaning, then why in the world would you do that? And he even goes so far as to describe people as mutilators of the flesh because they were cutting without any true meaning. And that's the thing with this, is that when we're looking at practices like this, is that we sometimes miss the question of what's happening on the inside. You see, back then they would be focusing on circumcision for the young men, but now we have the opportunity of bringing young children to God through baptism, both men and women. But do we do so and then just take it for granted? See, oftentimes we can take baptism and focus so much on it. And somebody might say, how do you know that God has saved you? And a person might say, well, I belong to this church. I've gone to it since I was five, whatever it might be. Or I was baptized on such and such a day. And we can take something beautiful that has planted the seed of faith and we can completely misunderstand it. For example, if you were to look at your significant other and you were to say, do you love me? And they were to say to you, well, I married you, didn't I? Would that be a really great way to start an anniversary? If someone is saying, well, I did it, didn't I? That's kind of missing the whole point, is that they want to know, well, tell me what's in your heart. And oftentimes we can do the same thing with the outward signs that we have with God's church and with worship, is we can end up missing out on what it was that baptism connected us to in the first place. You see, Paul, he, he had done all the things he was supposed to do. He was the perfect man of God in religious circles. And yet, this very perfect person was out there killing people for following Christ. Completely missed the forest for the trees. Spent so long being grateful that he was a good Jewish man without asking, what in the world am I doing with God's people? And the thing with this is that oftentimes we can end up trying to look good. We can try to act good. There are even the times whenever we're trying to be successful and not just making sure we have food on the table or making sure there's a roof over our heads, but we need to make sure there's a certain status. We need to make sure that somehow we have proven that we're successful to others. Maybe that the second home that we have or the vacations that we took or whatever it is that we may be wearing or showing to others because that somehow shows that we are good at life. Or even more than that, even just making sure that we have a beautiful family. Are they the best at their sports? Have they managed to get into the right college? Have they managed to somehow get the best boyfriend, girlfriend? Do they know how to show everyone else that we are good parents? And that we know that as long as they are good kids, then nobody has anything to point at us for. We can spend so much time trying to look for the things that are on the outside that we miss out on asking the question of what's happening on the inside. I, I taught physics for, for six years, and I still remember the private school that I was at, and one of the pastors was on the board and had helped to found the school, and I would teach his kid in the back row every day, and I knew that of all the kids in that room, that was the one that was causing the most trouble. But you couldn't say anything about it. Exactly. Because spending so much time making sure that things looked good on the outside instead of asking what's happening in the kingdom of God on the inside. The thing is, though, that Paul, Paul was striving. Yep. Go to the next page. And what we see is that he puts out this idea of striving for a goal. Now, I want to put in front of you, though, that sometimes we think of this as, have we become good enough? And by so doing, we miss out on what Paul is trying to get across to us. If you were to say that you're a musician, does that mean that you are a concert pianist? Does that mean 
that you have played alongside Elton John? If you were to say you're a musician, does that mean that you have a record deal? Does that mean that you've got your own following? No, a musician is somebody who plays music. Someone who is growing in their craft, someone who wants to learn more, who wants to pursue it. But it's not a question of how far you've gotten in it. It's just a question of which direction are you going? And that's the thing about what Paul is trying to get across here is to not focus on where you've gotten, but rather is saying who it is that you're following. Because here's the thing about Paul is he says, I'm going to let go of the past. But why is it so important to let go of the past? Because remember, this is the person that every time he preaches and the Jewish community sees him, they see the guy who helped them put Christians to death. Every time that he speaks to a church or an apostle and he knows that he may very well have persecuted their friend or family. And that every time he is living out his faith, he still has that thing nagging in the back of his mind. Don't we oftentimes have that? That thing that nags us, that as much as we get over it, it's still somehow there. It still somehow gets us. But you see, there's another side of this that Paul wants us to be wary of. Uh, go ahead and flip to the next slide real quick. Is that God showing us truth is making sure that we are aware of what he wants us to see. You see, more than that is that following after Paul is meant to be following after Christ. You see, sometimes we can spend all of our time thinking about, have I done everything perfectly? But let's be honest, there are other times in our life, times where we're really not that concerned about what we do or don't do in our life. It oftentimes happens the end of high school through college, the, the times where your parents call you up, how are you doing? Oh, I'm just fine. You don't really want to tell them where you were partying the night before, and you don't really want to tell them what's been going on. Yeah. But it oftentimes continues throughout our life. Is that we will have times where we say, this doesn't matter. This is okay. We'll, we'll take little boxes in our life and say, you know what? This isn't so great, but you know what? It's okay. That part's acceptable. And if someone were to say, well, yeah, but don't you want to grow through that? Well, I'm saved. Christ has done everything. I'm sure he understands that this part, that's just not always going to be good. But every time that we look at giving in to the cravings that we have, the desires, the things that we focus on, where we can't get over it, the times where it might be something physical or something emotional, something mental, something where... You just have to have what you want. But we sometimes separate that from what our life is in Christ. You see, God is not looking to just make sure that we've gotten marked and then we're done. But our entire life is to grow and to change. See, that's the thing about what we see with following after God, but also with his community. There's, there's a really weird guy in my life who sells mortgages. I try not to compliment him too often because he's going to get a big head, and it's already kind of big. But he recommended that I read the book Atomic Habits. I'm about through nine chapters of it. And one of the things that it keeps bringing up in there is that oftentimes we end up living up to the expectations of those who are around us. Whoever it is that we surround ourselves with, those are the ones that we end up living up to. Think about this. The times whenever you have struggled the most in your life, who was it that was around you? And that's the thing is that oftentimes we end up getting egged on. But that's the thing about Christ bringing us together as his people is that we're meant to encourage the best with each other, not to just sit around and laugh about all the dumb, stupid things and then just kind of leave it at that. Yeah, we have our moments. Yeah, we have our ups and downs. But when we hear somebody going down a path that we know is going to hurt them, do we just laugh at it? Or do we actually encourage them to grow through it? And that's kind of the hard part. 
because sometimes then we have to say what nobody else has said. See, we've got um, a lot of like the small groups that we've been building up, not just the classes on Sundays, but during the week. But one of the things we've tried to make sure is that it's not just go sit, you know, in a room and read the Bible and make sure you've understood it and then you move on. But also, have you actually talked to the people there? Have you actually connected with them and what they're going through? A, a few weeks ago, there was a friend of mine who's in ministry who had to send out an email saying, hey, you know this person that we've been volunteering with for the last few years? He murdered his wife in front of his kid. And knowing that the person that was right next to us, I'm in pictures with this guy, and that I had no idea what he was going through that led up to this moment that I cannot possibly explain. And that's the thing that we see here is that Paul is looking at a community saying, your life matters. And we're here to encourage that with one another. And that's the piece that I want to leave you all with here is that oftentimes we can focus so much on, did I get you into church on Sunday? Did we make sure you came and took communion? Did we make sure that you checked off whatever the box is? And you know, those are good things. But if we haven't actually connected with you as a person, if we haven't actually cared for you and your life in Christ, then we've let you down. So for that, I'm sorry if we've done that. I'm hoping and praying that we do better. Not because we're ever going to get to some point where we say we've got it all figured out. Because that's what we should strive for. We should strive for that as a community, and we should strive for that in our own lives. So if you've had a chance to connect with us and we've been able to do that with you, really, really glad, and I hope you can do that for others. But if you haven't, come find us. You don't need to do life by yourself. Together, as God's people, as fellow believers, we get a chance to bring joy to one another, not by ignoring the issues around us, but by walking through them together. So with our last slide, we acknowledge to you that whatever you may be struggling with, whether worrying that you haven't gotten everything perfectly down yet, or ignoring what life in Christ might be, as the people of God, may we bring you back to our Messiah, who has saved you and gives you a new life in his name. Thanks be to God. Please rise. This morning, we keep people in our prayers people that have been on our minds, on our hearts. But we especially want to remember Charles, Sue Ford, Kristen, Bill, Laura, Connie, Zachary, Don, Laura, Ray, Mike, as well as Michelle Tran, who has been going through cancer. We also keep in mind those who are unable to join us physically, Gloria, Estella, Billy, Rosemary, Jerry, Donna, Joanne, Claire, Mildred, for whatever reason that they are homebound, shut away from the rest of the world. Let us remember them and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we thank you that even at the times whenever we take for granted what you have done in our lives, what you've done in our hearts, God, we ask that you would continue to speak to us, not just to let us... Uh, to, to help us let go of the times whenever we wish to obsess over whether we've gotten everything perfect, but also to remind us that the things that we do in this life, they matter. And that as much as you've already accomplished salvation for us, what we do in this world does make a difference. Lord God, we ask that you would change us, that you would guide us, that we would know you and that we would follow you in each and everything that we do. And Lord God, help us to remember to connect with one another and not just allow each other to fall by the wayside. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, 
We ask that you would bless all of those who are struggling either physically or mentally, all of those who deal with struggles that are emotional or spiritual. Lord God, there are ways in which we can bless them, and we ask that you would move us to do so. Make sure that we are in their life and not allowing them to go through things by themselves. But Lord God, also for the things that we cannot affect, we ask that you would work in their lives, whether miraculously today or the hope of the resurrection to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you would bless all of those who serve our community, our government leaders, federal, state, city, county, those who put their lives on the line each day, whether police or sheriffs, EMT, fire, as well as those in our military, including our own Tyler. Lord God, we ask that you would bless them, that you would guide them. Lord, protect them from things that would harm them, but also continue to lead them in their heart and their spirit, that their actions and that their service would be a demonstration of who you are so that we don't allow our own selves to get in the way of what you have called us to do and to be. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for teaching us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you who are uh, guests, um, this is the part where people who are a part of the community here uh, bring their offerings. Uh, sometimes we do so online, uh, but if we haven't, we'll do so here. Not an obligation to our guests at all. For those of you who feel called to do so, we invite you to bring your offerings to the Lord, as well as make sure any prayer requests, be sure to write them on the cards that you have in front of you as well. Please rise. We celebrate communion, the Lord's Supper. It's not something where we come up to do abracadabra or hocus pocus, but because this is something that Jesus began and he says, this is my body and my blood of the new covenant. We celebrate it in his name because of what he has given to us. See, the night when Jesus was betrayed, celebrating the Passover with his disciples, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he took it and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And the next day, 
was when he was taken to the cross. And his sacrifice of his body and his blood was for our forgiveness. So as we receive this meal that he has given us, God is reaffirming what he has done on the cross for us. For those of you who believe that Christ Jesus has died for you, that his forgiveness is yours, and that as we receive this meal of his body and blood together, that he is reaffirming that forgiveness for you, we invite you to come forward and to receive it together. For those who need gluten-free, we have it on the side. Those who need alcohol-free, it's in the center. Let nothing keep you from the table of our Lord. Come, for all has been prepared. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. of this world will fade treasures of our God remain here I empty myself to all this world nothing and find everything in you riches of this world Treasures of our God remain. Here I empty myself to all this world, nothing, and find everything in you. I surrender, I surrender.
is the opportunity that we have as we connect with one another, the chance to be able to physically touch and see that God's forgiveness is true and real for us. May his presence here with us bless and keep you this week and always. Let's rise as we join to sing. Glad to be able to connect with you, but hoping to continue to get to know you and to share God's love with you each and every day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.